Hi again, uh, here we are to continue talking about um, JavaScript and we're working on our quiz and so far we've got a pretty good start on it, you know, um, you know, it looks like this, you know, I've got a list of, of questions, I got a list of answers for each question and you can only select one of those answers, right? Um, what, we need a few more things in here though to make this work. So we need a, like an alert message to say whether you got the answer right or wrong and we also need a, a button so you can submit your answer when you're when you're done right so um, let's take a look at our code so um, I got the code here and we you know we've kind of got two structures so we have a, a for each loop that's going to generate a form with an h1 that has the question and a ul that lists all the possible multiple choice answers and then we've got another for each that actually generates the li tags that go inside this ul and each one of those li tags is actually pretty complicated it's got an li it's got a label it's got an input it's got the answer text right and some attributes here um so now we need to generate um you know a, a button and an alert message and this is kind of how we mocked up our um our structure for our page right so we've got an h1 inside the form and inside um, you know that form we also have a ul with a list of li tags and so far we've um, we've already done some of this right we've got uh, we've actually got a lot of this done so we've got the h1 we've got the ul we've got our li's listed but we're missing this div and we're missing the button so you may have added this on your own um, i'll do it now right so you know the structure that i have shown here kind of is built right here right and we can see it kind of matches like form h1 and then i guess that means that our div is going to go in here um, I showed this as div dot alert. That's kind of like saying this div has the class name alert, and you'll see that kind of syntax for you know a lot on the internet. This is the way people write stuff, so this is kind of like a shorthand for that. Um, so I'll follow it and say class name is um, alert, right? And then you could put some text in here. I'll say you know alert text just so we can see it, right? Um, and then we'll maybe we'll remove that later but we'll, we'll have this text set dynamically like you know if you when you answer the question right and then our submit button right here is going to go at the bottom right so i'm going to say you know submit and um or i'll say button and then i'll give it the text of submit right and then i'm going to give this a type of submit and if a button within a form has the type submit then clicking this button will automatically submit the form okay so um, so there we go now we've added these last two things these guys are done right we'll mark them get rid of those exclamation points right and let's take a look at our work um, so I'll refresh this. Oh, there's my alert text and there's my button. Now, right now, if you click the button, you'll see the page reloads, right? I see that little blue bar going across. Um, and that's because submitting a form automatically refreshes the page. It really, it's going to load another document. Um, since we didn't specify a form action, it's going to reload this document. And we don't want that, so we're going to have to prevent that default behavior, right? Um, so this is pretty much done i think i'm going to remove that comment and then i think i'll go up here and i'll remove these comments also and then we're doing pretty good so far so this alert text can go to maybe i'll put a dash in there just for now just so we can remember that it's there um and then now what do we need to do well i think a good step here would be to um, handle submits on this form Okay. Now remember, you know, when the page is loaded, the forms actually don't exist, right? So the forms actually get put inside this, this div that has the ID quiz, right? And if I look at my, um, you know, in, at the inspector and I look at the page, you'll see I've got this div ID quiz. And if I open it up, it has all these forms in it, but actually they don't exist in the source code. So when the page loads the first time, 
those things aren't there, right? So we're going to have to listen for their submit messages dynamically, right? So what I think I'll do here is at the bottom. Now, be careful here. I want to be inside this init function. This function is actually getting pretty good, pretty big. Maybe we want to break some of the stuff out of here. But um, for right now, we'll just put it inside there. So I want to make sure that I, I'm within this function, right? So if I put the cursor here, usually like um, text editors or code editors, like if you put the cursor next to a, a bracket or a parentheses, it'll highlight the closing one. So I can see that this one is closing right here. Maybe I'll even mark that with a comment. I'll say end init, right? So that I know that the init function ends here, okay? I feel like my formatting is not quite right. Um, I'll fix it later, but anyway, so that's that's pretty good. So what are we going to do here? Let's add a an event listener, okay? So I'm going to listen for submit events, okay? So I'm going to go up here, and remember, we've already gotten a reference to the container for the quiz. So I'll copy that, and we'll be able to access events from this. So I'll say quiz element dot um, add event listener. So this is another way that we can add events. And when you call the add event listener method, it takes two parameters, right? So the first one is the event name. And the second one is a callback. Okay. So the event name is always a string. And the callback is a function. Okay, the event string is, uh, you know, it has to be one of the names for an event that exists within JavaScript. And there's like a whole bunch of events. I want to say there's hundreds of them. There's a, I don't know the exact number, but there's a, there's a lot, right? Um, the, when you submit a form, when you click the submit button, then the event is submit. Okay, if you click something, the event is click. If you, you know, uh, change the value in a field or input, then the event is change or input. Right. Um, if you move the mouse, there's a mouse move event. Um, there's a whole bunch of these. Right. We're listening for the submit event. So I'm going to add a, a listener for submit, and I'm going to add it to this thing. Now this thing isn't a form, but the submit message should bubble up from any forms that are, you know, contained within the quiz element. Okay. And what's going to happen is when an event of type submit occurs and quiz element is is notified of it then it will activate this function it'll run the code here and whenever you have an event listener an event listener always takes a parameter and the parameter is an event object and that object describes the event that just occurred so the event object is actually an object just like the objects we created here for our quiz questions right so it has properties with values, right? And actually the event object is super complicated. It's got like a lot of properties, right? Um, I always use E for the event object, right? And um, so let's let's give it a try. So I'm going to say, um, how about uh, console log? We'll just take a look at it here. So I'll say console log E. And uh, we've added our event. Let's give it a try. So if, uh, oh yeah, you know what we got to do? is I forgot we got to do one more thing, right? Actually, well, let's, let's just try this, right? So I'll refresh it. And when I, I select an answer and I click Submit, let me get the console here, right? Let me do it again. You'll see that the page reloads, and so I don't get my console log message. So what we need to do is we need to prevent the default behavior, right? So this might be a problem, like if you're testing this and you're like, hey, why doesn't this work? I don't see my console log message. That's actually, it's like kind of a, a, a really frustrating thing that everybody runs into. But if you have a form, that form will refresh the page. And when you refresh the page, it's like all this JavaScript runs again. It's just like the page is reloading all the content here and it runs this code, it sets up the forms, adds new event listeners, and it erases everything that you just did, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, hey, you know what, I don't want to um, do the default behavior. And so I'll call prevent default on the event object. So event object gives us this method, right? And when we have this prevent default in here, then the, um, the page won't refresh, right? So I'll refresh it here, and now when I submit, 
you can see I get my event object down here and I don't see the page refreshing, right? So that blue line isn't going across. And let's just take a look at the event object, right? So this object, again, this E, is just a, a JavaScript object, just like the one we created for the quiz. And it has a whole bunch of properties. So it's got bubbles is true, cancel bubble, cancelable, composed, current target, event phase is trusted, target. Now target is the form element that, that submitted the event, right? So in our case, it'll be the first form. If we click the submit button on the second form, then this would be, you know, when we get the event object here, this new one at the bottom here, the target is gonna be the second form, right? So the target is the thing that generated the event, right? Um, so anyway, so that's pretty good. Um, what are we gonna do next, right? So that's, that's good. So now what we wanna do is we wanna check and see which answer was selected, okay? So that means we'll have to look at all of the list items within the UL. Right, so if we've got the form and we know what form you're in, then we'll need to search that form to find all of the list items inside it and then ask those list items whether they've been um, checked or not, okay? So I got a challenge for you, um, just as a first step, just to see if, you know, just to see how things work. Can you um, list all of the answers in E dot target, right? So E dot target would be your form, and then the answers would be the li tags that are inside of the ul within that form. If that makes any sense, right? So I'll I'll handle that in the next video, but you can give that a try on your own here, right? And there's a few tools you can use. You can use. Um, let me give you get you started here. You could use um, E dot target dot um, query selector and if you used query selector that would give you one element but if you did query selector uh, all that would give you all of the elements right give you multiple elements okay so that would get you started there's a little more to this but uh, now if you use query selector you would need a selector that would you know select the you know the inputs or the li's inside here right Actually, I guess you'd want the inputs inside the li, right? In, uh, inside the label, right? Because we actually, this is pretty complicated, right? We got an li, we got a label, and then you want to get this input, right? Okay, so give that a try, and then we'll, we'll handle it in the next video.